might be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that I don't have to worry about this fiery furnace, because if I have to go into the fiery furnace, then you're going to minister to me some way to keep me in that fiery furnace. I'm not scared here, God. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to run from the adversary, but I'm going to stand boldly in his face, and I'm going to proclaim that you are righteous, and that you are my Savior, and you're the one that I'm going to continue to serve all the days of my life, and that if I'm thrown into fiery trials, that goodness and mercy are with me, and I'm going to consult them in this situation. I'm going to let them bear all my circumstances, and I'm not going to abandon what you've done for me. But God, I will trust you in all things, and I will believe in you to the end, O oh Lord God. And I know that one day, God, whether or not you minister an entrance to me right now, or uh, whether you minister an entrance to me that I might have repose in this present world, I, I know that ultimately there is one entrance you're going to minister to me, God. And whether it be while I'm still in the flesh and you say, come up here, God, and I'll be raptured with you, O oh Lord God. I, I may be that way, or uh, elsewise I will go to sleep, O oh Lord God, in this flesh. Uh, but either way, you're going to raise my body up, uh, and I'm going to find myself in union with you. Uh, I'm going to find myself in heavenly places. Uh, and God, I'm just thankful for that. So, in light of all these things, and in light of all these causes, uh, I am not concerned about what might come my way later this evening. I'm not concerned what might come my way this week or next year. But God, I will trust you. I will put all my confidence in you. Because I want interest only. Interest not into circumstances that are pleasing, but interest into your love. Interest into your compassion. Interest into your mercy. Interest into relationship with you. Because God, more important than anything, more important than clothes and raiment, more more important than food and shelter, uh, more important than friendship, oh Lord God. Uh, my soul longing for you. Uh, my soul yearns for you, oh Lord God. Uh, my soul thirsted for you, oh Lord. Uh, so as I find myself uh, wanting to avoid this trial, uh, so I find myself trying to avoid temptation. Uh, so I find myself trying to run from the circumstances that I find myself in. Uh, I bring to remembrance the children of Israel. Uh, and I don't want to seek you only at the beginning and at the end. Uh, but in the interim, oh Lord God, I'm going to seek you. Uh, so minister to me in instance uh, that I might have a way with you, oh Lord God. Uh, that I might have fellowship that you would keep me in these circumstances. God, I need your power. I need your strength, uh, because in that, O oh Lord God, I can be confident uh, that there is no temptation that can come my way. Uh, there is nothing that I will face in this life that I cannot handle through your power. So I'm trusting you right now, and I'm putting all my confidence in you that, God, you are going to make a way out of no way. That you will materialize a way when I just don't see one. Because what God is trying to let us understand here is that He wants to bless us. But we have to come to grips with one fundamental thing. And that is, don't look for an exit. Look for a way to get closer to God. Because as you enter in and get closer and closer to God, you'll start losing sight of these things that are around you. See, I always, uh, I always, uh, uh, you know, uh, tease our daughter because you know, she just loves looking at stuff and asks lots of questions. And the thing about it is that sometimes nosiness can get us in trouble. But the important thing that we have to keep in mind is that if we stay focused on the main thing, if we stay focused on what we should be focusing on, we won't find ourselves getting distracted. We won't find ourselves looking at something that is leading us off in the wrong direction. And just imagine that you find yourself getting um, paralyzed. They say that a lot of times when something is coming, like when you're in a car accident, I know it happened to me, and I was parked and the car was coming behind me. I looked up in the rear view mirror and seemed like everything was coming in slow motion. And I'm thinking to myself, And then you know there must have been a lot of times I'm analyzing the situation, thinking about all this stuff, and then I think you. And, and the car all of a sudden starts moving. But if you think about this, what is this saying to us? It is saying that if 
instead of worrying about what that car is going to be, instead of worrying about whether or not I'm about to eat it, worrying about what the car in front of me is going to do, whether or not I have my insurance premium paid, whether or not all these considerations that we place in our time, what God is trying to get us to understand, don't worry about that stuff, just call upon my name. Seek me right now. Don't worry about those things. Don't get distracted about all those things that are around you because if you seek me, if you put your focus on me, you will lose sight of that which is around you. And I know that God's in there, that as you get enraptured in the presence of God, as you start to praise God and to worship Him, as you go deep into prayer and you're in the Spirit with God, you will realize that you're not worried about the folk who said something about you. You're not worried about the fact that you lost your job. You're not worried about the fact that somebody is about to come and repossess everything that you have. But you're just thankful about being in the presence of God. That's when you start to have those great passions. 